people initially, when we used to show it, they, they would just assume it was mercury. So, because it looks the same. This sodium uh, potassium fountain, liquid metal fountain, is, is a device that enables you to safely move these liquids around without letting them get exposed to the atmosphere or to your skin or to anything else. NAC is an alloy of sodium, Na, and potassium, K. And what makes it unusual is that when you mix these two metal, you get a metal that is liquid at room temperature. It looks like mercury, but it's very light. In fact, it should float on water. And it looks a little bit like mercury. Unlike mercury, of course, it's highly reactive. And, and you've got lots of videos that show reactions of sodium, potassium, and, and the, you just don't want to, uh, to have these kind of things around the atmosphere or around water. Oh! You start dropping it, it's so reactive It'll react with the water in the air and it'll be on fire before it even reaches the water. It is a liquid and therefore the surface is clean. So the oxygen and the water in the air can get to the surface much better than it could as a solid. More than 35 years ago, there was a lot of research here on NAC. They used to use it as a coolant. So it's a liquid, so it can be flowed around quite easily. But it's a metal, so it's got really excellent thermal conductivity. So this liquid metal was a coolant, and it was particularly used in the, in the nuclear industry. NAC was being used for cooling nuclear reactors, particularly the sort of reactor known as a fast breeder reactor. And NAC was chosen as the coolant because, as a metal, it conducts heat very well. It would take the, the heat away from uh, a nuclear reactor, carry that heat away in this liquid metal, deliver it to water uh, without letting the two touch, of course, uh, and then the water would be turned into steam and that steam would go away and would power a turbine and create electricity. And sodium and potassium can go in intense radiation fields without becoming radioactive. The problem is that it could be corrosive. And so my colleagues were doing a whole series of studies on corrosion, which involved pumping round NAC for days, if not weeks, over test pieces of metal to see if any of it dissolved. That is, the metal dissolved into the NAC. Because what that would mean is that if you use those metals in a nuclear reactor, you could dissolve them away with the coolant. And that would clearly not be a good situation. Don't make your pipes out of that one. Yes. The problem that they had was they needed to pump round this liquid that was enormously corrosive or potentially corrosive and reactive and to do so when it was at quite a high temperature because they were simulating reactors that had a temperature of two or three hundred degrees centigrade if not more. And they devised a fantastic pump and built one of these pumps out of glass so that it could be shown as a demonstration for visitors. Unfortunately, about 10 years ago or so, before we started periodic videos, it was decided that these demonstrations were so dangerous that we had to get rid of them. But before it was destroyed, my colleague Steve made a video about it. So let me explain how it works. It is based on the same principle that is used for electric motors. You have a piece of metal carrying a current which is in a magnetic field and there is motion. What we have here, and this is a crude analogy, we have a powerful magnet, north and south magnetic poles. Okay. And in between we have the container with the knack and then there are two electrodes going in, two wires that carry a current. There is a historic trick in physics for memorizing called Fleming's left-hand rule. So it's based on the thumb and these two fingers, which if you hold them right, are all at right angles. And what this says is that if you have the magnetic field given by this finger going in this direction from north to south, and the current going through in that direction, you get motion going upwards in the direction of my thumb. So what you see there 
is you see Steve cranking up the current. As he cranks up the current, what happens is that the liquid carrying the current between the two wires experiences an upthrust. And because it's very light, it's not a dense material, it shoots upwards and you get a little fountain. The pipework is such that the liquid then just goes round and round and round. It, you, can, you can see this on the video that you have the second finger is the current that's going across the electrodes. Uh, the first finger is the field, that's the big magnet. And when you put those two together and you turn up the, uh, the current, and you'll see me doing that in the video, then you get the motion. And the motion is the fountain that gets flung up through that, um, through the, I guess there's an orifice that throws it up. The fountain goes up and then the stuff comes down and goes back down the bottom and then gets thrown up again. So you get this continuing cycle of liquid metal that's going around and around. Because the stuff is so dangerous, the whole apparatus is then surrounded by a glass bulb which contains argon. So if there is a leak, all being well, it doesn't burst into flames. So the knack was going round and round and round, washing the surface over and over again. And so you could measure the corrosion quite precisely. And sometimes they measured the corrosion electrically by measuring the resistance of the piece of metal that they were studying. Because NAC is such a good conductor, they could make the whole apparatus out of metal and it would still work. The one we've got on the video is glass, so you can see what's happening. For the first 20 years that I was here at Nottingham, we used to demonstrate this to visiting students. It would just be sitting in the corner of the lab and as we took a party round, we'd say, look, I switched this and, it, and they'd go, all go, ooh, and perhaps come to Nottingham. But most of them didn't realise quite what a historic piece of equipment it is. My feeling is that probably it was an act of vandalism to destroy this equipment and we should have just made it rather safer and still kept it because it is really a historic experiment. As far as I know, I mean, I, I used to use this to, to demonstrate when it, were, when it was uh, not deemed to be uh, too dangerous to do so, but then it was and it was taken away. Of course you could fill it with mercury. The problem is that mercury is very dense. The mercury would feel exactly the same force from the current and the magnetic field, but it just wouldn't be enough to lift the mercury up because it's so dense. What, of course, you could do is to put in a very, very much bigger current, and then you could make mercury go round, but probably something unpleasant would happen. It would overheat or arc or whatever. So it's really designed just for doing NAC. Or you could use it at higher temperature for liquid sodium or liquid potassium. Like everybody dealing with dangerous chemicals, if you know how to handle them, they can be quite safe. In fact, on the other side of this building, there was a piece of apparatus that had two gallons, that is about eight or nine litres of liquid sodium at a temperature above its melting point, which is 96 degrees. And you could go up there rather like to a tea urn and just take a thermos full of liquid sodium and take it back to your lab. And that was there for perhaps 10 years before they got rid of it. And so I never heard of any accident at all from these.